From this distant vantage point, the earth might not seem of any particular interest. But for us, it's different. Consider again that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever was, lived out their lives. The aggregate of our joy and suffering, thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines, every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every king and peasant, every young couple in love, every mother and father, hopeful child, inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there on the mote of dust suspended in a sunbeam. The earth is a very small stage in a vast cosmic arena. Think of the rivers of blood spilled by all those generals and emperors so that in glory and triumph they could become the momentary masters of a fraction of a dot. Think of the endless cruelties visited by the inhabitants of one corner of this pixel on the scarcely distinguishable inhabitants of some other corner. How frequent their misunderstandings. How eager they are to kill one another. How fervent their hatreds. Our posturings, our imagined self-importance, the delusion that we have some privileged position in the universe are challenged by this point of pale light. Our planet is a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. In our obscurity, in all this vastness, there is no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves. The Earth is the only world known so far to harbor life. There is nowhere else, at least in the near future, to which our species could migrate. Visit? Yes. Settle? Not yet. Like it or not, for the moment, the Earth is where we make our stand. It has been said that astronomy is a humbling and character-building experience. There is perhaps no better demonstration of the folly of human conceits than this distant image of our tiny world. To me, it underscores our responsibility to deal more kindly with one another and to preserve and cherish the pale blue dot, the only home we've ever known. Consider again that pale blue dot we've been talking about. Imagine that you take a good long look at it. Imagine you're staring at the dot for any length of time. And then try to convince yourself that God created the whole universe for one of the 10 million or so species of life that inhabit that speck of dust. Now take it a step further. Imagine that everything was made just for a single shade of that species or gender or ethnic or religious subdivision. If this doesn't strike you as unlikely, pick another dot. Imagine it to be inhabited by a different form of intelligent life. They too cherish the notion of a God who has created everything for their benefit. How seriously do you take their claim? See that star? You mean the bright red one, his daughter asks in return. Yes, you know, it might not be there anymore. It might be gone by now. Exploded or something. Its light is still crossing space, just reaching our eyes now. But we don't see it as it is. We see it as it was. Many people experience a stirring sense of wonder when they first confront this simple truth. The immense distances to the stars and the galaxies 
mean that we see everything in space in the past. Some as they were before the Earth came to be. Telescopes are time machines. Long ago, when an early galaxy began to pour light out into the surrounding darkness, no witness could have known that billions of years later, some remote clumps of rock and metal, ice and organic molecules, would fall together to make a place called Earth, or that life would arise and thinking beings evolve, who would one day capture a little of that galactic light and try to puzzle out what had sent it on its way. And after the Earth dies some five billion years from now, after it is burned to a crisp or even swallowed by the sun, there will be other worlds and stars and galaxies coming into being, and they will know nothing of a place once called Earth. The significance of our lives and our fragile planet is then determined only by our own wisdom and courage. We are the custodians of life's meaning. We long for a parent to care for us, to forgive us our errors, to save us from our childish mistakes. But knowledge is preferable to ignorance. Better by far to embrace the hard truth than a reassuring fable. If we crave some cosmic purpose, then let us find ourselves a worthy goal.